let's talk about how we're gonna do a characterization. So we come out to the site, whether you're with a group or you're by yourself, whatever, you should probably do the same thing. First thing you wanna come in, park, get to the site, make sure everything's safe and secure. Um, we do wanna make sure everything is safe because sometimes in these coastal areas, we have some folks doing some silliness, these, these high traffic areas. So cars locked, all that good stuff. We've paid our, paid our parking uh, fee or whatever it is. We get to the site. First thing you wanna do is you wanna do a, a, a meander around the whole thing. So do, um, right here we're at Malibu Lagoon, we're at this little um, promontory, but you don't always have that. So you might need to work more fully around the entirety of the site to either get a good vantage point or to see the whole thing, right? So you wanna get a big picture first. What does this look like? Is it wet, is it dry? Lots of animals, not many animals. Lots of people, not many people. So, so get in the overall lay of the land. Not making any notes at first, just looking around. Um, anything uh, very prominent, any big challenges prominent, anything that's really cool and, and interesting and, and of note prominent. Let's do that a little bit. I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna get to my, prom, my, my uh, vantage point, the best vantage point. Start taking some pictures. So I'm gonna take out my camera, my phone. I'm gonna take a couple pictures here and there, maybe a couple landscape, uh, a couple um, uh, images where I get a, a wider pan, uh, panoramic type of photograph to get the, the, the whole sense of it. Then I wanna stay here and I wanna hang out for a couple minutes. Not taking photos, not taking pictures, just watching, right? So taking it in. What we're trying to do is get a sense, we're trying to read the landscape. Is there a lot of animal activity? Uh, is there uh, a lot of human uh, disturbance that might come in pulses, say, say as the um, crossing signal lets different cars in every so often or, or something of that nature? Okay, so I'm gonna hang out here and just watch. So we'll sit here for five minutes and do that. Da, 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 da. Magically five minutes goes by, 10 minutes goes by, 15 minutes goes by. Okay, cool, now I'm starting to get a sense of the rhythm of this site, a sense of what's going on. Also, if possible, I'm gonna to wanna to visit several times, right? You guys are gonna to wanna to come maybe in the morning, maybe at midday, maybe in the afternoon, if it's, if it's convenient, if it works out in your schedule. That way we'll, we'll get a sense of the, the ecology, the, the dynamics of the system at different points in time in, in a, over the course of a day. Um, okay, so then after I get this general sense, what are, the, what are the elements I'm looking at at this wetland? So one, I wanna see, are there lots of critters? Are there lots of vegetation? Is it, is it de-vegetated? Are there, is there no critters around? Um, so, so getting a sense of things. Then I wanna see how things are distributed. Are all the critters or plants in one area? Are they evenly distributed throughout the site? Are there certain areas where there's lots of one plant, another area where there's a lot of another type of plant? Is there an area where the human traffic is concentrated or, or the human disturbance is concentrated an area where it's relatively free from those stressors? Um, next, I wanna look at the water. Well, what's the water like in this area? So, um, so in this case, I'm looking here and it's, it's very stagnant. There's a very light breeze. You can tell that if you look at these trees right here, you'll see these, this, this bioswale right here. The trees here are, are gently swaying. So there's a gentle breeze, not not strong, but just gentle. If you look at the if you look at the uh, a sycamore here, you'll see the leaves flapping, right? But when we come back here, looking at the looking at the water, we come back here looking at the water. We don't see a lot of ripples. We don't see a lot of movement. So one, that's because we have this this uh, uh, shield of vegetation. The water is a bit lower, but it's also saying that there there isn't there doesn't appear to be a strong current. Water isn't coming in. Water isn't going out. In this case, we're at a um, a tidally influenced system, but it doesn't look like there's uh, tides coming in or tides going out. So it looks very stagnant. Next, are there any clues? You know, if we're doing a full assessment, right? If we have the contract, we might want to go out and check what's going on in the middle of the channel of the lagoon. For the purposes of our assessments, we're not going to do that. We're not going to create that disturbance, but we can get some clues just by looking. So if I look over here, here we the, we just happen to have a little snag right here, a little little uh, down tree, little little branch thing sticking out. And around it, we have some algae. It's Ulva enteromorpha, some green algal uh, species that bloom in, in late summer, early fall, typically. But then, wherever it's not that sort of lightish green, it looks black at the surface. So that's gonna be an indicator that this, was, this water um, is very reduced. There was, a, there was probably very recently a lot of water very high, and this water was um, not well oxygenated, not a lot of turnover, not a lot of wind, not a lot of currents exchanging, things like that. In other words, a very still system. And so that, that black is characteristic of a reduced environment. And so if we were to get close, it might smell a little bit like rotten eggs or sulfur kind of smell. Um, 
and so again indication indication of not much moving that's not that's not necessarily bad right we don't all of our wetland systems don't have to be um you know super aerated and all that kind of stuff what that's going to say is this is a relatively still system so if a bird wanted to build a nest here it's not going to be washed away for example it's going to be and we see some a coot uh, swimming in there we see some birds all around here so so uh it's a place where those types of wading ducks or or, or scooping type uh, 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 wading birds or scooping type of ducks and those kind of critters can actually uh, get algae, can get the inverts that are on the algae, forage like that. Okay, um, so getting a sense of what the water was is like, or at least was like just very recently, getting a sense of what the vegetation is like. Now what about the critters? So do we see a diverse amount of, and, and a classic critter for our wetlands are our birds. So there's, there's frogs, there's, there's amphibians, there's invertebrates, there's all kinds of things. But the, the, the most obvious, most conspicuous one is gonna be uh, the bird community, the avian community. So I'm looking around here, I wanna see, even if you're not a great birder, you can at least start to see what types of birds are there. Are they birds that are sitting in the water? Are they birds that are wading around the edge? Are there birds with big strong wings that are sitting there drying like cormorants or egrets or things like that? Or are there are there uh, songbirds, are there, are there um, um, uh, passerines that are hanging out in the in the shrubs okay cool get a sense of that then once we once we have a sense of of, of this site and so okay and i'm starting to get the sense of the critters the hydrology the this or that now i want to see what are some of the potential stressors or what are some of the things that that could need addressing etc so the first part of that is i'm going to want to look at the surrounding communities so here if we look this way, we're looking towards the ocean. Um, actually right there, you can see the ocean, but on this little spit, we have houses between us and the ocean. So that's gonna be a barrier. Um, if we look over here in the freshwater uh, input area, that's a bridge, that's a bridge over Pacific Coast Highway. So there's, there's some constraint there. So there's a lot of traffic on the side. So we can imagine if we have some coyotes or bobcat or, or rabbits or, or snakes or things of that nature that might be trying to get to other areas upstream and they try to go terrestrially, they'd have a problem. In the water, they could go underneath the bridge, but, but that's, that's sort of an issue, right? or it could be an issue at least. So, so getting a sense of the, the stressors and the landscape context. So is this, is our site in the, you know, one little postage stamp in the middle of a bigger wetland complex? Is it uh, a, um, a postage stamp and there's some, there's some stuff in between, then another postage stamp, then a little bit another postage stamp somewhere else? Or is it an isolated system? If you recall our definition, our tripartite definition of, of a wetland, um, um, we, we tend to really be focused on legally what, what, what the absolute edge of the wetland is. But these systems function as part of a larger ecosystemic whole, right? So we have terrestrial stuff coming in, we have marine stuff or, or down, downstream stuff going on. How do we fit into that complex? How, what's the landscape connectivity? So after we've done that, we've, we've, we have a pretty good sense of our initial site visit. We've taken some photos, we've looked at the, the distribution of organisms, we've looked at what organisms are here, we've looked at the physical lay of the land, the, the, the physical setting of the system, we've looked at the stressors and, and the area outside the immediate wetland proper. Once we've done that, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good field visit, right? To do this properly, I probably want to spend, you know, it depends on the size of the system, but again, we want to first start with a, a walk around the whole system so we get a lay of the land. Um, so depending on how big that is, that might take, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour, 40 minutes, depending on how big the site is. We come back to our vantage point or our, our, our we could have several vantage points. Um, and so we probably want to spend, you know, on the order of half an hour or so at least getting, a, making these observations, quietly observing, writing stuff down, even if we're not sure, just starting to jot some notes down. And then as we get towards the end of our observation, take a break and go back and review my notes. Hey, so at first, the first minute or two, I thought this critter was really abundant, but I haven't seen it since, that kind of stuff. So we wanna so that go back, double check our initial notes. And then before we leave, what, what's the general sense of this place? What, what, what's the general feeling of this place? Does this look like a healthy wetland? Does this look like a popular wetland for people or organisms? Does this seem to be uh, an important area for ecological functioning? What are the key ecological functions, right? So, so what are the takeaways? Why might this area be worthy of, of restoration and management? Um, and then, and that would be our initial uh, site visit where we're looking at the current status. The next thing we'd wanna do is we wanna look at what the potential is for, for restoration. What might we be able to do? Now that's gonna come from you really understanding 
the current level of functioning, and then what what might we be able to do to make things better? Starting with maybe the the most obvious intellectual things. Oh, remove the road or move those houses, right? And so you might want to start with that. But then realistically, am I really going to be able to move a, a you know interstate highway? Am I really going to be able to move those houses? Maybe you think you can. Maybe you think you can't. But then if, you know, operating from maybe a little bit more constrained idea, what might I be able to do? You know, if, if I if I can't move that 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 pier that that bridge, that, that highway. Well, might not be able to do it. Maybe I could do this. Maybe I could introduce some new plants. Maybe I could change the hydrology. Maybe I can introduce some new endangered species that are looking for a habitat. Maybe I can manipulate the predators, the non-native predators here, the cats that might be coming in from people's homes, things of that nature. And so, uh, and so anyway, so, so that's our site visit, right? So that, that, that's a quick site visit. That, that should give you a good sense of, um, at least initially, what the site is like, what it's been like recently and where you might be able to take it in the future. So that's a site assessment for our restoration ecology class.